gracious Heavenly Father, I come into your presence once again by means of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit, thankful for this opportunity that you've given us to just feast upon your word, to think about it, to meditate on it. I ask that you would guide and direct this ministry. Bless everyone that's here listening. Seal to our hearts that which is only truth, filtering out all of the ignorance and the foolishness. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. We've been studying uh, through the book of Revelation, and in our last study together, we looked at the great white throne judgment, which ended the 20th chapter. Uh, Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And so we'll begin looking at chapter 21 in this video. So let's talk about our new home. The chapter begins, it starts out, and I saw. Uh, the best manuscripts don't have the, the name John there. Uh, and I saw, and right away, um, I know that this is looking forward to the eternal state, a new heaven and a new earth for the, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And just about every marriage ceremony that I've ever been to, the bride really takes a lot of, uh, goes through a lot to a lot of effort to make herself look beautiful. Uh There, there's, there's so much that, that is, is here in the text, and we're, our time is so limited. Uh, this, I want you to note that this follows right on the heels of a passage dealing with God's judgment. Now, I understand that things tend to jump back and forth in time as we go through the book of Revelation, but following the great white throne judgment, this is what we're looking at. But there's something interesting going on here, and I, and I, hope, I hope to be able to, to, to point this out clearly. I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband, this right after what we just studied in our last video, the Great White Throne Judgment. F following the subject of judgment. Judgment on on uh, on that which uh, uh, you know you could say you know this is this was the second death that we looked at. This God's final judgment on the the unbelieving. Uh, so it's a judgment on that which has no possible chance of being restored, but which is, which is removed from the scene entirely. Where that uh, what takes its place is something entirely new. And I can't help but in reading this, I can't help but, but think about our death in Adam and our new life in Christ. And, and right away, you know, okay, Steve, you're on this, this my, your mindset is set on this path, you know, down this road of doctrine. And, of course, uh, 
And I'll admit I, 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 I take full responsibility for that. I'm, I'm uh, guilty as charged. But, and, and I, I know that we're talking about our new home and all of that seems to be past and, you know, we're looking forward to the future and, and, but first and foremost, dearly beloved, this is God's work. I, I have no problem seeing doctrine in every single verse of these passages. And I, and I think it's important that we take note of that, especially if there's a pattern to be seen. So I just wanted to point that out from the very outset. Uh, we were not in Revelation 20, my last video. We were not the great white throne judgment. We were not in that, uh, that passage uh, in the literal sense. Okay. But as a pattern, we were. We were looking at judgment there on the unbelieving, but our judgment fell on Christ. If You can't look at the great white throne without at least thinking about the fact that there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Our judgment fell on Christ. In chapter 20, God's judgment fell on those who were not His. And you stand, you and I, we stand holy, unblameable, and unreprovable before God. And we see that God tabernacles among men here. We're going we're gonna to see that soon in our study here. Well, that's interesting. Our judgment fell on Christ. Christ now tabernacles within us he lives within us are you getting this united together with us in our in our inner man our our new man old things have passed away behold all things have become new hello okay uh, i don't uh, maybe i am maybe i don't know it's you decide whether or not i'm reading too much into the text i don't think i am I believe that we're now looking at the eternal state. Back in chapter 20, at the great white throne judgment, heaven and earth fled away and no place was found for them. No place was found for them. Now, maybe that's the elements melting with fervent heat, as it says in, in 1 Peter. I'm, I'm inclined to think that it is. No place were, was found for them. And what is the consequence of that? I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and first earth were passed away. Uh, we just read that back in chapter 20. And that seems to fit. And there was no more sea. Okay? And I take that literally. Now, I could be wrong about that. Uh, you'll have to decide on your own about that. I take that literally. I don't think in the new heavens and the new earth there's going to be any sea. Now, now you can say, well, Steve, that, that can't be, you know, because the earth can't exist without a great body of water, you know, uh, from which we get nourishment and, and for our plants and everything. I don't know. My Bible says that there was no more sea or that. Or that sea could be the nations. Keep in mind, uh, as we've gone through these, these chapters, you, you know, the nations are as the troubled sea, the beast rose up out of the sea, etc. Uh, if you go over to Isaiah chapter 57, we read the wicked are like the tossing of the sea. Or, I came across Amos chapter 7, verse 4, which is interesting. It talks about fire consuming the great deep. So I don't know. Uh, perhaps it's both. Uh, could be uh, looked at literally as well as figuratively. I don't know. 
It just may be that there's a new heaven and a new earth and there isn't any more sea. Uh, that doesn't mean that there isn't any more water. We know that there's the water of the river of life. I'm just going to say that there's no more sea. Our citizenship, we know, is in heaven from whence we look for the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our vile body that it might be fashioned like unto his own. That's a new body. You know, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. The same word that's used for new here, okay, is, is the word used for you being a new creation in Christ Jesus. You know, but, but what do we really know about heaven other than what God has revealed about it here in, in his word, here and in other places in his word? You know, I think uh, much of of what we think we know about heaven, uh, I think a lot of it, we get it from outside the scriptures, you know, and they're, they're in, a lot of it's accurate, true to scripture. A lot of it is not, you know, we see it in hymns, uh, uh, poems, books, articles written by men as far back as we're able to dig them out of ancient history. You know, what is heaven like? This is what we're looking forward to. This is what we're anxious for it's what we long for and so what is heaven like i read in first corinthians as it has been written i has not seen nor ear heard neither has entered into the heart of man the things that god has prepared for them that love him it's been a many a sermon preached on that uh, but no, it's not the end of the sentence. But God has revealed them to us by His Spirit. What did He reveal to you about heaven? Is it is it what we read in in uh, articles and the books that that I have in my library, uh, or is it like what some songwriter wrote about a hymn? Is that what He revealed by His Spirit? What did he reveal by his spirit? And, I, and I'm afraid that our anticipation, and we have a lot of it, especially nowadays, our, our expectation of, our anticipation of heaven and our thoughts about heaven are more carnal, I'm, I'm afraid, than, than they are spiritual. If then ye be risen with Christ, seek those things, okay, which are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Our conversation is in heaven. And now all of a sudden we come to a passage and heaven appears to be a city descending upon earth. And I believe God has revealed to you and to me everything that he wants us to know about heaven. And that is that it's, uh, it's a, it's an astounding, wonderful, marvelous, exciting truth, okay? You are with, you and I are with Christ. That's heaven. That's what's written, and that's what's been revealed by His Spirit. We seem to be more interested in what the physical things of heaven will be like But what has really been revealed, what is it that's really been revealed to us? And it's in every page of Scripture. It is God is with us. Now, can you, dearly beloved, can you imagine anything more wonderful than that? That the sovereign monarch of all eternity is in unbroken fellowship with you and you with him. Honestly, I, is there anything else that could be compared to that? I mean, who cares about a big, big horse ranch with 10,000 head of cattle when I, I'd, I'd prefer to walk alongside the Lord and you, and you folks anyway. Uh, 
Reading on, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. That's, that's, that's an interesting word. The word is the Greek word for tent. Not, not the, the palace of God, the mansion of God, the, you know, the tent of God is with us. He's tabernacled with us. The tent or the tabernacle of God is with man. And he shall dwell with them. They shall be his people and God himself shall be with them. Their God. The, the words and be are, if you're looking at the authorized version, the words and be are, are italicized. You'll notice that. So they're not there in the original text. That's what's been revealed to you by his spirit. You can dream about your mansion and you can compare yours with Paul's or, or yours with the, with the, other, the next guy. You know, uh, you know, and that may be fun. But what we know about heaven is, dearly beloved, is we're with him. Emmanuel, God with us. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, Matthew, as, as we read in Isaiah. Shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And we suddenly read here in chapter 21 that this eternal state, heaven, is God with us. That's Emmanuel. And my, uh, my question to you, I guess, would be, what could you possibly compare with that truth? That heaven is God with us and we with him. There's nothing else that could compare with that. I don't, I don't care what the streets look like. I don't care what the buildings look like, what the mansions look like. Uh, look like I don't I don't know what my responsibilities are going to be in heaven you know one one gets the idea that maybe we'll sit on our back porch overlooking a clear mountain lake drinking uh, Sue's sweet tea I, I know there will be some kind of activity and responsibility I know that I also know that he will delight in fulfilling the desires of our heart but dearly beloved he hasn't told me what that will be and I don't think God wants me to know. I don't think anything in heaven can stand in comparison with the truth that we are with him and he is with us. So I think in a nutshell, that is heaven. You know, we have a new heaven and a new earth. Not basically new with respect to time, says the Greek word there, the Greek word new. But new as in respect to quality. Character. You see that same thing in the word life. You know, eternal life, Zoe, you know, is it's the quality of life. We are a new creation in Christ, but it's but it's in a temple of of clay. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. One of my favorite verses, you know, and and uh and much preaching today much of modern preaching today wants it to be of us we're going to have a new body in this eternal state that is new in this in the same sense not that it's new with respect to time but new with respect to quality and character apparently when the elements melt with firm uh, with great heat ferment fervent heat they come back as a new heaven and I want you to take note that's singular for all you Greek students out there. It's not new heavens and new earth. It's new heavens singular. That's interesting. And a new earth by God. He says he'll make a new heaven. And now in this new heaven and new earth, John sees the holy city, New Jerusalem. It's Jerusalem. If it's named Jerusalem, then I, I, I conclude it's, it's going to come down 
where Jerusalem is. Uh, I know that's pretty much an assumption, but I, that's what what I would expect. That it comes down where that the old Jerusalem is, or where Jerusalem was in the old earth, and it's a holy city. Holy city. That is, it's totally set apart for God. That's the same fact, thing is true of you. When God says he'll present you holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight, that you stand before him without spot today, you are holy, you are called holy, you are called a saint, you are, the word holy is set apart for God. That's what it means. The city is totally set apart for God. And it's called New Jerusalem. Same word for new. Comes down from God out of this new heaven. Why does there need to be a new heaven? Because it is it is singular. It's not plural. It's singular. Now, my feeling is that since Satan has had access to heaven, he's defiled it. And once Satan is cast out of heaven and we go through the judgment phase, there's going to be a new heaven. Created anew. Cleansed. Just as you are. A new man in Christ. Totally cleansed. That which is born of God does not sin, cannot sin, because his seed abides in us and we cannot sin, because it is born of God. So I believe heaven is now also a new creation, totally free from any presence of evil. I expect there are probably Christians, a number of them out there, that, that, that are would find it difficult to understand how Satan could possibly have access to heaven, but clearly if we believe the scriptures, he does. He stands before God accusing the brethren day and night. The city is prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, and it is impossible to take that to, to read that this city is the bride of Christ. The city's not the bride of Christ. A, a bride's beauty is not the bride. You know, I had a I had a car once back, you know, when I first joined the Navy. It's been a long time ago. It was a 69 Oldsmobile 442, really sharp looking little car, sporty looking car. Many of you know the car I'm talking about. And uh I referred to it as a jewel. That car, that, that 69 Olds 442, that was a jewel. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the car was a jewel. The text says, as a bride. And I want you to zero in here on the word prepared. God prepared it. We didn't. No more than you prepared your 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 new man in Christ. A bride adorned for her husband. Do you know what that means? It's a beautiful city. The word adorned and the word prepared are both perfect passives. The city didn't do this. Some agent other than the city, it's a passive voice in the Greek, prepared that city and adorned it. And part of that preparation. Part of that preparation, the major part of that preparation we know is that God Almighty became our kinsman. He died in our place that we will never die because as a result of his death in our place, we'll never die. He died in our place that we might stand before him without spot, without blemish. And Ephesians 2.10, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Them. Underline. Them. That's the works we walk in. What, what works? His works. The finished work of Christ. As I pointed out, our ju the judgment seat of Christ for the believer will determine how we built on Christ. 
Our own works are insufficient to fit us for this future life. They are insufficient to, to walk through this life, this present life, and bear fruit unto God. It's not about our works, but He is. They are prepared. They were prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And this heavenly city is prepared by God, the text says. Our home has been prepared by God. Now listen, folks. I don't want you to miss the fact. If you're looking at your text here, and if you're not, I ask you to. Turn to Revelation chapter 21. Look at verses 1 through 8. 1 through 8. Because verses 1 through 8 describe the eternal state. This is after the thousand year reign of Christ. Whereas in retrospect, the heavenly city Jerusalem, in its relationship to the millennium, is seen descending out of heaven from God which begins at verse 9. Okay? It seems backwards, but, of course, from we know the author of this is the Holy Spirit. He doesn't do things backwards. I'll say that again. Verses 1 through 8 describe the eternal state, okay? In, as far as this heavenly city is concerned. Okay. It is only later on that we see this heavenly city spoken of in, in its relationship to the millennium, okay, where it's seen descending out of heaven from God, which begins at verse 9. That's an important fact to take note of. Uh, verse 10, uh, he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and he showed me that great city, the holy, Jerus holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was likened. And it goes on and it describes, you've got a pretty good description of this city from verse 10 all the way through verse 21. 10 through 21. Okay? That's a lot of ground to cover. I'm going to leave you folks to reading that, studying that, meditating on that on your own because it would take me forever to go through all that. Verse 22, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend a little more time here talking about the latter part of the chapter here. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it, and the city had no need of the sun, Will, will, ask yourself, will those on earth that, that occupy the kingdom on earth, those who are in physical bodies that, that are born, live, and die throughout that thousand years, the kingdom age, the kingdom on earth, will they, there be a need for the Son? And the, the answer is obviously, you know, yes, of course they will. There will be a need for the sun. Neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. We're looking at the heavenly city suspended over the earth. Now, I don't know if it's a cube. I don't know if it's a triangle. I don't know. It's, it's 15. I've always thought of it as 1,500 miles high, wide, and deep. That's probably with each level having its own atmosphere. 
I've thought a lot about this over the years. I've thought, you know, well, we, we need to consider the rotation of the earth and uh, it's being suspended over the earth during that period, whether the nations walk in the light of it. And of course, well, there's always a dark side of, of the earth, you know, as well as a light side of the earth. And of course, you know, I'm not going to sit here and try to calculate the, the, the orbiting altitude, the orbiting speed, you know, and all this junk, okay? All I know is what the text says. When, you, when we gather all of the evidence concerning this holy city together, when we, we talk about the relationship of the saints to this heavenly city, the purpose of this he heavenly city, its location uh, at any given time, uh, its occupants, you know, who inhabits this heavenly city, uh, its means of entry, uh, who is able to enter into the city, who is not, uh, its relationship to the, the kingdom, its relationship to the eternal state. What we find out is that this city, this holy city, it, it has a relationship to the kingdom age as well as to the eternal state, and those relationships differ. Uh, I want you to I want you to note what the text says. The uh, the Lamb is the light thereof. The nations of them which are saved, this these, the nations which are saved, shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. The heavenly city can only be entered into only those in a glorified body. Resurrection is required to inhabit the heavenly city. The heavenly city returns with Christ at the second coming. We return with Christ. The church returns with Christ at the second coming, as does the heavenly city. It is suspended over the earth during that thousand-year reign. The nations of the earth will walk in the light of it. It can only be inhabited by those who are resurrected. It is our, we, we, we transition, okay, from heaven during that seven-year tribulation period, we're in heaven. We transition from that. When, when the time comes for Christ to return at the second coming and we return with him, we transition from heaven to the holy city, New Jerusalem. We've entered into that. We're able to enter into that because we're in glorified bodies. At the second coming, the Old Testament saints are raised and the tribulation period saints are raised. So the church, along with the Old Testament saints, the tribulation saints, as well as the unfallen angels and Christ himself, will occupy that heavenly city. Of course, during that thousand years, there will be many generations that will come and go. People will be will procreate. The earth will be repopulated. People will, will be born. They will live. They will die. There will be a need for salvation. And the saved who die during the, the millennial age, the saved will enter into that heavenly city, New Jerusalem. Because it is only after the thousand years that there's a new heaven and a new earth created. That's how I understand it. When you piece it all together, that's what it looks like to me. Note in... Note, it says, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. 
neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away, it says. Okay? You're looking at the eternal state, not the kingdom age. Okay? Verse 4, God wipes away all tears from their eyes. Will they cry during the millennium? Yes. Will there be death during the millennium? Yes. Verse 4, there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Well, is there going to be pain during the millennium? Yes, there will be. It said the text says for the former, the former things are passed away. This is the eternal state we're looking at. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Eternal state. Okay. Verse 6, he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life. Freely. Freely. Verse 7, he that overcometh, and I don't know how many videos I've made on this, the subject of overcoming. Oh, we got to overcome. I hope we overcome. Lord, please help me overcome. If you are, if Christ died in your place, you're an overcomer. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Alpha and Omega. I began this. I put a period to it. I gave those promises. I've now fulfilled them. Just as redemption was all of grace, without cost, all the enjoyments of heaven were all of free grace. All of creation, folks, will be laid open to our enjoyment. I believe that Christ will... will he longs to fulfill the desires of our heart now and will at, at, at this time. He will delight in fulfilling the desires of your heart. We are joint heirs with Christ. That, that is all that he inherited. All that he inherited. We will share in that inheritance. And the truth is, folks, is that we share in all of that now. Just as, just as eternal life is not something that you're going to have someday, you have eternal life. We have eternal life now. It's not something we're waiting for. Now, possessions, you know, a whole other matter. We don't now possess all of that which that we, we've co-inherited with Christ. But we will share in that inheritance. And that is our minds can only imagine what that will be. But we share in all of that now. We share in all of that now by faith. By faith. Faith. We walk by faith. Well, listen, I'm out of time, folks. I love you dearly. I, I truly do. I ask for you to, con I ask you please to consider praying for the direction, the future direction of this ministry. I hope all of you are doing well out there. I'm feeling much better. I'm still having a few minor problems, but nothing worth mentioning. I think of you all constantly. I pray for you all continually. Rest in Him. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.